Hello and welcome to the NPS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. It's good to be here. Okay, okay, shut up. There we go. <laughs> wow. Uh, they, they, they shut up pretty uh, on cue. Yes, it's almost like I pushed the right button. Yay. <laughs> So anyway, in today's episode review, we are going to review uh, the Mother Pony Feats of Friendship comic issue number three. Uh, if you guys at home are wondering, oh, you know, if you heard me go solo with one and two, I feel like number three Silver should be around because I've always mentioned that he enjoyed this comic. He enjoys this comic. Now let's see if this is true or not. Oh yes, I definitely enjoyed this comic. It's one of my favorites of the IDW line. Cool, cool. Anyway, uh, in this issue, the young six face the final challenge of the feats of friendship as their friendship comes apart because of Swiftfoot. Oh, evil her. <clears throat> so before we head into the review, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, this is where everything comes to a climax. After all her machinations, Swiftfoot is getting to see the consequences of her actions. And we learn yet more about her history. And oh, the Greek things, the Greek themes themselves hmm. are fantastic, but also the characterization oh. of the student six as we, hmm. as they solve this problem. And then Twilight's uh, feats of friendship, it's like, girl, you crazy. <laughs> well, she learned from the best. And for the, I think she's working out some past history. Just be like, yeah, I could beat that now, but we'll get into that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So before uh, we before I say my uh, first impressions for this issue, I, I need to ask you about one and two. Like uh, overall thoughts for them. Well, issue one was basically a setup, just getting all the pieces in order, and I think there was a, a bold choice to add another tribe. That that to say that when Equestria was founded, there was a splinter group that no one paid attention towards. I mean, granted, there are Earth ponies, and you're like, oh, how threatening. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't spare a Pegasus, but could you? But they're not really Earth ponies, are they? they? They're some sort of other tribe. Well, I mean, I didn't see any wings or horns in the mix. Yeah, I mean, they, they are, um, if I'm not mistaken, they have some special power, is it? Oh, they have magic. They Don't get me wrong, they have magic that can... And this is all a test to see if they're ready to conduct an invasion. Side note, they're not. On a side note, they're mean to one another and they will fail. Indeed. But I appreciate that the Feats of Friendship test is basically the 12 labors of Hercules. It, oh, really? No. It's easy to miss out, as, as I was reading month to month. But when you step back and look at it all... These are Hercules' 12 labors. I did not know that. Well, let's see here. Uh, pardon me as I just look up certain things. It's okay. Um, like I mentioned before, uh, when, when I did this solo, um, I didn't have that realization. It could be because that I am not well read, so that flew over my head. But ooh, that, that's pretty cool. Yes, I'm just pulling up older issues now. Let's also look up the 12 Feet of Hercules. So, where did you get the info? From the comments or uh, on your own? Uh, mostly, I just thought about uh, what we were seeing. And I think somehow I put the two together. Mm, Let's see. That is cool. There were, ten, there were originally 10 Feet of Hercules... But now they've uh, they've reduced. They he had two more added because the man who tasked him with these basically uh, said, "Oh, you you had help for two of them. Doesn't count. Doesn't count." <laughs> now this is Hercules we're talking about. I feel like that's not someone you try to pull the old switcheroo on, <laughs> uh, especially when what. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, in Legends, he was a jerk rather than a good guy? Well, he was 
muscle, all muscle and no brains. Uh, think, honestly, think Goku of Dragon Ball. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, that that I can do, but I mm, uh, I have issues with Goku, but they're not here. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can I can come up with a couple. So, trying to recall, part of the quest for the golden apples featured him facing uh, the two-headed dog. Oh, uh, yes. I've, mm, memory is failing me on what the dog is called, though. The Ortho, was it? Orthos? Something like that, yeah. So, yes, an Orthos. And... Uh, that was sort of a warm up to the Cerberus, which I don't believe they've covered. In the comics? Not in this particular comic. Mm, no. Then to clean the stables, I mean, boy, when I say clean the stables, King Aegeus' stables, which had never been cleaned, they are basically just filth on top of filth on top of filth. Hercules had to divert a river. Mm -hmm. So the apple gathering is part of the uh, orthos, like the golden apples. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. for then building a uh, stream across the river, that's part of the stable cleaning. Because let's be honest, no one wants to actually have to clean the stable. Mm -hmm. uh, the chimera. I believe that might be a substitute for Cerberus as a three-headed beast. Oh, okay. So they got that going. And now we come to Hercules, or sorry, it might be Heracles, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. defeating the Hydra. So it's not all the 12 labors, but there is more and more to get into with this issue. Uh, all right, all right, all right. So, uh, basically, one and two are just the setups, and we can clearly see that Swift Foot here is just a big meanie. Well, she's product of a really bad home. <laughs> yes, and uh, for my first impressions for issue three, I like where the setup is going, but I have that feeling of. You know what? That's gonna, I'm going to leave that for the end, uh, and I hope I can remember that. But yeah, um, overall, uh, I I like it. Uh, it wrapped up neatly. But anywho, uh, if you guys at home have not read this comic, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So let's jump right into it. So we continue off the comic with the young six fighting with each other, bickering and whatnot, and we see Swiftfoot here. Um, glo gloating is that the word? Gloating? Glo no, gloating is another thing. Gloating. Well, gloating. Would you say she's gloating? Well, gloating. Usually, that's out loud to other people. This one's more of an internal monologue. But yes, she mm -hmm. is. She is temporarily basking in the success of her efforts. But at the same time, too, she's doubting what she did is right or not. So we have a, what shall we call this, flashback to when she was at home in the kingdom of Trace, Trust. How do you say that? Uh, the kingdom of Thrace. Thrace. Okay. So uh, long story short, uh, the king wants her to... Um, go to Equestria and uh, enact their plan. But before that, uh, her twin sisters are very mean in telling her that she needs to meet up with father a bit late. So yeah, um, <laughs> when she's there, she asks for forgiveness and whatnot. But uh, the father didn't really care um, she still thinks she's an idiot but uh, he tells her that I want you to go to Equestria so you can do your plan um, Swiftwood here asks wouldn't the uh, wouldn't uh, the elder sister be good for this job 
and they say that she's too old and probably won't f- uh, cut it. And the twins are just idiots. So you are the best candidate for this one. So don't screw this up. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, just, just about. Although this is also a Hercules theme. As one of his labors, he had to travel to Thrace, where oh, uh, okay. where there were four mares, which were the terrors of Thrace. They were kept, they were kept tethered by iron chains to a bronze manger, and be, because they would eat human flesh. And their names were mm. Podragos, the swift, Lampon, <laughs> the shining, kind of like. Uh, shining Light, mm-hmm. Xanthos the Yellow, a.k.a. Blondie, mm-hmm. and Danos the Terrible, or Terry Bell, <laughs> which is all the okay. names of Swiftfoot and her sisters. Even okay, with this knowledge, uh, this is awesome. And the ruler uh, of Thrace was in mythology was King Diomedes. Diomedes, but uh, over here in this comic is still King Trace. Uh, uh, actually, no, his name is King Diomedes. The island is Thrace. But Terry Bell really? says, all hail King Diomedes, future of King of Thrace, future King of all Equestria. Ah, uh, okay, 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 my bad, yeah. But honestly, so, I get the impression it's Terabel who's running the show, and Thrace is just a figurehead. Yeah, but at the same time, too, like, he's the original pony from way back when, so that means he lived a long and prosperous life. Well, prosperous is questionable, but still, long life. Or he may be the descendant of said king, and, well, that their family tree is more of a stick. <laughs> I see. So, anywho, um, we continue on with the flashback with Swiftfoot joining the academy and asking to join a particular set of teams, which is the Young Six. So, um, they we sorry, uh, we get uh, we come back to the present and we see the um, Young Six arguing with each other, and <clears throat> uh, we we see that. Uh, Yona and Silver are in a heated argument until Silver says yak yak to yak yark and uh, Yona hears that and laughs at what she had to say and uh, Silver says uh, I was trying to say we do care and we're trying uh, and we're trying in yak uh, and Yona says oh, you are saying we need more Mario for the throat bike uh, so hey, that's a very important skill. Yeah. Never let that go unchallenged. Have you lubed your trike, your truck bike today? <laughs> not yet, not yet. I, I I will do that later. Oh no, <laughs> unacceptable! <laughs> uh, how's the man time treating you? <laughs> it's dead. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we we see that. The group are explaining to one another what happened and what not. And uh, long story short, the group is trying to learn Yak, but Yak is not a very easy language to pick up. On top of trying to learn Yak also with homework they need to do. And yeah, they're, they're kind of busy. So uh, with that, Yona is happy with their actions and is in tears and everybody kind of patched things up um, Yona is sorry for yelling uh, at Ocellus because of stealing the glory and uh, Sandbar is sorry for telling Ocellus that uh, she needs to transform because of the event and whatnot. and overall everybody here is sorry and everybody forgives each other but one thing I didn't notice is that um, they, they mentioned about uh, Smolder's um, diamond situation or gem situation. Yes. Oh, did they? Uh, what did they say? 
Let's see here, just me. Well, mostly she just apologizes that she hasn't uh, been a great friend. Uh, I think uh, she's. So. I think she's just letting go of the idea that she needs a diamond diet, or she's going to just raid Rarity's uh, boutique. That's an option. You, you know, you, you know, there is also another option, and this is the best one: asking Spike for some. There's always an option. There's always an option. So, and she can act on that. Honestly, I yeah. bet of the group smolder may have some of the weaker reasons for being upset at least compared true, to the others but yeah true but it's one of those things where uh it's a topic of discussion because um swiftfoot here doesn't really well, i won't say doesn't really know she she specifically knows each and every one of their um weaknesses and exploits it and I find that fascinating. Uh, but at the same time too, um, some of the reasons that she tries, sorry, uh, some of the ways that she tries to manipulate the um, young six are a bit meh. Meh. Um, with, especially with um, Senbar. Like, what's Senbar's thing? Nothing really because Senbar's all goo-goo for her. And that's about it. Oh, that's... He's the weakness of every young man. He's done. He's True. just a little horny. True. But could you just imagine if this is in the future where Yona and Senbar are in a relationship and she suddenly comes in. <gasps> Ooh, drama. Well, more like, oh, my high, my high school crush. Wait, Yona was also my high school crush. What? How many crushes did I have? Uh, you remember the main six? Oh, sorry, you remember the young six? All of them, including Gallus. Have you seen the fan arts? Oh, the fan arts. The fan arts go as far as the eye can see. Yes. <laughs> we but ship anyhow, the um, hoo ha hey out of them. <laughs> I'm cool with that. And um, so, yeah, as like I mentioned before, everybody is apologizing. And Gallus has to mention wait, a dragon apologizing? <laughs> So everybody gets uh, back into shape and they hug it out. And uh, Swift here kind of breaks down and kind of, yeah, breaks down. And uh, how do I even explain this? Like, she's baffled by their friendship. And she too says, like, after all I've done to you, uh, you still want to be my friends after everything I've done, and as how to put it, as a person who, sorry, um, how to put this, as the audience, we know what she did, but for the student six, they got no idea, which I really enjoy. Isn't it? Sorry, I mean this is simultaneously her confession, <coughs> but also it's more to herself. This isn't uh, the liar revealed moment or uh, the group implodes and she's cast out. They The students exchanged her without even knowing it. <laughs> and she changes more through self-reflection than a friendship beam or anything so overt. This is a much more subtle approach and I enjoy it. Do you think that Twilight knew about her and just says, you know what, let's let's see how this rolls? You know, uh, I'd give Twilight that credit if I could, but it's always a coin toss with the <laughs> main six in the School of Friendship. They, more often than not, the students seem to have learned in spite of their teachings, which is not, <laughs> that was a big flaw in seasons eight and nine. Yeah... Kind of, but um, and uh, anywho, uh, let's continue on. So the ev uh, the starting of the next event is about to get started, and everybody uh, plays their hands on one another and says, "Go team!" And they do uh, for the last and uh, so for the final challenge. Uh, Twilight activates some kind of crystal that Gallus helped set up previously and 
Twilight cast a Hydra. Twilight summoned and... Hydra. It's super effective. Oh no, that's bad. Oh no, like what are we going to do? I mean, it is just an illusion, but it's an illusion which they can physically interact. So it's like... That uh, is true. It's like a uh, hard light hologram to borrow from Red Dwarf. Oh ah. <laughs> uh, man, yes, yes. So anywho, um, Swift asks Gallus if he has a plan and uh, Smolder here says, that last, uh, that, sorry, the one on the left looks like my uncle. I mean, <laughs> what? <laughs> How? <sighs> no, let's see Honestly. here. Knowing her family tree now, I, I worry. Yeah, her her uncle might be Big Red uh, from uh, Dragon Shy. At Could this be. point, their their impact on the equestrian world all seems to tie together. So why not? <laughs> Probably, but anywho, Gallus' plan is pair off and pick a hit. Um, so he tells Osiris to transform and change into a Hydra and they all attack a head and somehow they won they, they, they win they, they pin the Hydra down and they win did Twilight see what they needed to do well let's see here take it in, uh... so, so, nope, nope, you're supposed to take it down somehow all uh -huh. the students in her class are expected to be able to take down a Hydra I really think Twilight was just holding a grudge at this point. <laughs> like, oh, oh, it tried to eat me. Well, you know what? I've got a whole school now, and that even my students can <coughs> kick your keister. So come on, Hydra, try me. Try me, why don't you? Yeah, I'm guessing, like, honestly, the other students failed. Well, I'm, I'm mostly I'm thinking the Hydra is like, bitch, you crazy. <laughs> so anywho uh, the student 6 managed to take down the Hydra and pin it to the uh, floor with a 3 count and poof they won yay team Y6 finished in record time and that was amazing woohoo but not enough to propel them to the first place yay but I, I do like uh, one of the panels for the comic where they're celebrating and Swift is just giving the bedroom eyes to um, Sandbar here. And Sandbar is just like, ag, 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 ag. error 404, Sandbar is not found. Well, unfortunately, he's about to have a, well, heart crash. <laughs> Gonna... Oh, boys. Going to have a major error. But uh, I, I just find it funny that they they only got second place. Now, if I look at the team that surpassed them, two, three, four, mm -hmm. five, six, seven. Yep, full teams. I'm guessing they did really well on the bridge building exercise. Not really. I mean, uh, the bridge building exercise was terrible and Rainbow Dash just gave them pity points. The best points of them all. <laughs> yep. And I'm looking at the composition of the team and it's comprised of six Earth Ponies and one Unicorn. Well, flying wasn't a big thing in this. Which I'm like... Yeah. Which I'm like, Rainbow Dash didn't, didn't come up with something for a flying team? You're talking crazy talk. Uh, still, uh, they stand on the podium, they got second place, and uh, who now? Um, the, let me see. A small. No, the, the group says that, oh man, uh, it's too bad that uh, Swift couldn't join us for this because she's part of the crew and whatnot. And. Swift, we, we see Swift exiting the Colosseum and saying that um, you guys really deserve to be up there, but not me, not yet. Uh, I haven't earned it. And she leaves Equestria 
before before leaving, she stands on the hilltop looking at the town, which is a really good drawing of the town. Uh, we get to see the um, castle of friendship and also uh, Candlelight in the foreground, sorry, background, way back, 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 back there. And this render is really good. I like it. But anywho, uh, she swears to try and change the people of her uh, uh, people of Tress and tries to, well, protect friendship and whatnot. And with that episode, sorry, comic ends. Well, I mean, I don't know how much success she'll have in that regard. I I always hoped that there'd be an, a sequel to this. A follow-up where perhaps the Student Six get called on because she really needs their help to make this happen. That'd be mm -hmm. something. Uh, the Student Six redeem an entire country. <laughs> that would be cool. But anyway, um, uh, let's go to final thoughts. And Silva, you, uh, you, you mentioned a few things before. So overall, what do you think? Oh, I thoroughly enjoyed this story. Uh, this is one of my favorites because of the hidden meaning of all the Heracles adventures and their trials. I uh, I just love seeing them take form in the feats of friendship. And also, I really enjoy that the villain isn't hit by any power, isn't uh, undone by any overt magic. She is... Well, she changes through awareness and reflection. And I find that a more believable redemption than if she'd just been hit by a rainbow laser. <clears throat> that is true. I mean, uh, she she didn't really show any powers besides persuasion and manipulation. So honestly, for her redemption, it's kind of balanced. I, I like it. I like it a lot. I'm much the same. But my only gripe with this comic is that the introduction of a fort tribe and to not even reference it in later comics is just a waste. Uh, this is similar to the second arc of the My Little Pony mainline comic with the Nightmare Rarity and the moon thingy. Like, that was kind of a waste. Well, I mean, the Crystal Ponies themselves were a waste. <laughs> You know, they introduced and we never really got to know any actual crystal ponies. Until, that is also true. Until the point where they didn't even have to be crystal 24-7. It's like, oh, keep lowering the bar. No, I'm not that disappointed yet. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, okay, uh, we, we are introduced to a Fort Tribe, which are the crystal ponies, but... I believe that everybody in the fandom really, 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 really wanted bad ponies and we didn't really get them at all. Now that's, uh, well, a splinter group of Pegasi that took on a bad pony appearance. That would be something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's fan, uh, fan art, sorry, mm, there's fan fictions about it a lot and stuff, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not even going to go there. Like, the mechanics of how things work, blah blah blah. I don't know. And the the only official appearance for them in my head is I think they appeared in that um, Nightmare Nights episode where um, Princess Luna comes along. And the only reason the bad ponies are there to me is just that it's just glamour on their wings. So because it's Nightmare Nights, see. What a fright! Yeah. Give us something well, sweet yeah. to bite. Yeah, well, overall, great comic. Love everything except for the introduction of the Trace. Tr tr tri trace? Thrace. Tracians? Yeah, Trace. Tracians. Tracians. Yeah, except for them. Like, that, that kind of bugs me. Well, I mean, I, n I don't know where things are going to go in the IDW line. After all, uh, IDW has lost the rights to publish Transformers media, but they still have the rights to My Little Pony. 
they didn't lose it. They decide not to continue with it. Uh, it was G.I. Joe and uh, Transformers. But this does bring a whole new can of worms when it comes to the crossovers. Uh, the Malapony crossover with Transformers. That, that one is going to be a headache in the future to reprint. So uh, for you guys at home, buy them now before they don't print it anymore. That's too bad. I was looking forward to Ponies vs. Quince Sons. Ooh. Are those the four hit things? Yes. Uh, five headed. Five faced. They just spin around. One of them is the face of death. So uh, edgy. They're, so they're edgy. annoying. Annoying. They can be the biggest threat of all. Yeah. True. But anywho, um, with that, comic ends and we've already given our thoughts. So um, I guess it's rep- time to wrap up. Wow, um, this is done in record time. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmggmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the media show, and my personal Twitter account is Nor- at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Ah, uh, you can see me on many a front. You can find me on uh, Twitter under MLP Silver Quill, also on DeviantArt, and on YouTube. A search for Silver Quill, w- or After the Fact Silver Quill, you shall find me. Unfortunately, if you do just a search for After the Fact, you might get a long-standing BBC. Uh, no, no, not BBC. It's a Middle Eastern talk show called After the Fact. Oh, really, you know, I have no idea what to do in that in that instance. Let's see. Oh, uh, um, after the fact, I am getting uh, ANC news. ANC news. Okay. Oh wow, that's that is very interesting. Uh, I wish I could oh. claim credit for that, but no, somebody else took it. That bothers me. I mean, hmm. huh? Bitter. It, it's it's strange because. Uh, I'm I'm looking at it, and your video is not here at all. Even though I follow you and stuff, oh, the algorithm's strange. Yep. So you gotta look for Silver Quill and After the Fact. Oh, let's. Oh, yeah. Okay, After the Fact, Silver Quill, or MLP After the Facts. Ah, uh, you'll get you. You get Silver and all of his stuff. Yes. So. Yay. That's the weirdness of YouTube has not been kind to me as of late. Yeah, from what I uh, from what I've seen, a lot of creators are using other what you call this other outlets to kind of pick themselves up. Uh, like you mentioned Patreon and also Coffee. Did you mention Coffee or not yet? Ah, oh, yes, I also have a Coffee and a Patreon. But uh, you can find both of those through my YouTube channel. Yep, yep. Go follow him, guys. Silver is a great guy, and he does funny content. Yay. And you're going to a con, right? Yes. Though I'm not sure if this... if No, by the time this premieres, I should be just getting ready to go to Harmony Con on February 18th in Texas. Huh. Wow. So, if you guys are going to HarmonyCon, go say hi to Silver and buy his swag. (laughs) Swag, yo. Always appreciate it. Anyway. Yay. So, anyway, also please subscribe to Radios on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PunivLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Tristan, and myself like. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Quail. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Oh man, I missed that song. Oh man, that, that's great. That's great. Uh, it's always here if you need it. 
Yay! Now let's move on to the next review because the next review is going to be legend. Legendary. Yes. 